hey guys once again welcome to our channel hopefully you guys are doing great in today's video we'll be dealing with a new concept actually it's not a new concept but it's a continuation of one of our previous concepts that we are discussing in our previous videos so as you can suggest by the video's thumbnail the concept that we're going to discuss in today's video is electron subshells and orbitals so without wasting our precious time let's get cough Already we have covered most of um, the part of the subshells and orbitals. There's some part left, then we'll, be, then we'll be moving on to the ionization energies in later. All right. So electron orbitals. Now, now as we know that shells are divided into subshells and subshells are so on divided in further into orbitals. So each shell can be further divided into subshells labeled S, P, D, and F. So sp, d, and f is the order there, is the pattern they are following when they are filling subshells, already we know from our previous video. Now, each subshell can hold a specific number of orbitals. Then you need to be aware of, and we have discussed in the ground state video also, make sure you check them out, check that video out. Alright, so s subshell, if you see, it will contain only one orbital, that is really one s, alright, it doesn't contain any p orbitals. That's why we discussed that every shell has three p orbitals except for the first one because it only contains one orbital and that's is the maximum that it can hold talking about p subshell p subshell contains three orbitals which are labeled px py and pz and that we discussed um, in later in the last video we discussed that um, about the shape of the p orbitals that they are dumbbell shaped and they are occupying x y and z axis and hence the name comes px py and pz if we talk about D and F subshell, so D subshell contains five orbitals, the structure and the their labeling, you don't need to know about the labeling and structure. F subshell contains seven orbitals. And for F subshell also, you don't need, you um, don't require to know their shape, to know their uh, shape and structure and their labeling. But you should know that these and five F subshell, they contain five and seven orbitals respectively. Okay, you should, you shouldn't be knowing about the number of orbitals. Now, now these subshells, as I discussed before, that these subshells are divided further into orbitals. And each orbital can hold a maximum number of two electrons. So the maximum number of electrons in each subshell are as follows. So we have already discussed um, that shells are divided further into subshells. Subshells are further divided into orbitals. And these orbitals can hold maximum of two electrons as subshell the subshells can hold a maximum of two electrons okay and depending on the number of orbitals each uh, each subshell will have a different number of electrons so as we know that each orbital can accommodate a maximum of two electrons this means as subshell contains only one orbital so it will hold only two electrons and p subshell contains three orbitals so it will hold three times two electrons that will be a total of six electrons D subshell contains five orbitals, so each, um, so like there will be two electrons going into e, uh, each of the orbitals, so two into five, that will be a total of ten electrons. And finally, for the F subshell, we have um, seven orbitals, and two orbitals will be occupying each of the seven orbitals, so that each of these seven orbitals, so we have be having two into seven, total of fourteen electrons. So make sure you are aware of this. This is very important, and in, uh, in your ACE level, you need to be aware of them. Moving on. <clears throat> All right. So in the ground state, we, we have discussed in a previous video, um, in the subshells and energy, if you have, or if you didn't watch it, make sure you ch check that video out. So in the ground state, orbitals in the same subshell have the same energy and are said to be degenerate. So the energy of a px orbital is the same as a py orbital. So as I already discussed in our previous video, that if you talk about, for example, let me just say 2p. All right, 2p subshell. It will contain three orbitals. That will be Px, Py, and Pz. And these orbitals are occupying the same subshell and they have the same energy. And so they are said to be degenerate. The question in your examination, they might mention or they might state that uh, why orbitals in the same subshell have the same energy or why orbitals in the same subshell are said to be degenerate. So you should know that in the ground state, they have the same energy and, and so are said to be de degenerate. So you should remember this reason. So the energy of a px orbital is the same as a py orbital. Moving on. Now this is a diagrammatic snapshot 
of shells, subshells, and orbitals. Now, if you talk about, let me just take my. Okay, if you see, this is the shell they are occupying. N equals one, that's the closest to the nucleus. N equals two, that's further away, and N equals three is the farthest. Now, in this shell, we have the subshells, S, P, D. Okay, so in the, from this shell, we can see that it's the second shell. And second shell contains, no, it's a third shell, sorry. So it contains 3S, 3P, and 3D subshells. All right, you can see from here. Then if we move on, one second. If we move on, we will see that these subshells for example we talk about p subshell it will contain three p orbitals and we can see from the diagram px py and pz and you should also know that electrons will exist only these electrons will only exist in these specific orbitals inside these specific orbitals not in between them for example in between px and py not possible in between py and pz impossible so you should you should know this okay this is an idea of how the shells are further divided into subshells and so are further divided into orbitals. Moving on. This is the diagrammatic snapshot in which we are showing a table. And table shows uh, four shells and we are indicating by this by the principal quantum number the n shell. So we have n equals 1, n equals 2, n equals 3, n equals 4. Let's take this pen one second. Yeah. Alright, so this is n equals 1 n equals 2, n equals 3, and n equals 4. Now this is the subshells possible. Now if you talk about the first shell, I've already told you that it contains only one s orbital. The second shell contains two subshells. That is s subshell and p subshell. The third shell contains one s, one p, and one d. And the fourth, sub, fourth shell contains four uh, subshells. That is s, p, d, f. Okay, the fourth shell basically from fourth subshell you will notice to fourth, five, sixth, and seventh shell you will notice that they all contain four, they all contain all the categories of the subshells that is S, P, D, and F. Now, orbitals per subshell. Now we know that from our previous videos, we know that S subshell will contain only one orbital. Okay, S subshell in the second shell, then we have 2s, 2p then s will contain only one orbital and uh, p orbital will contain p subshell will contain three orbitals that is labeled p x p y and p z the third shell will contain three orbitals s three subshells s p d and we know that s contains one orbital and p will contain uh, three p orbitals that will be p x p y and p z d subshell contains five orbitals no need to remember the structure the, their names and the labeling the fourth shell will contain all the orbitals, that is S, P, D, and F. Okay? And we know that 4S contains one orbital, 4P will contain three orbitals, labeled P, X, P, Y, and P, Z. 4D orbital containing five orbitals, and 4F will contain seven orbitals. Okay? So, I am just recalling every concept from our previous videos, so you are aware of uh, what exactly so you understand you have an idea of what I am exactly trying to make you understand all right now it says Orbitals per principal quantum number. So when they're talking about orbitals per, per principal quantum number, this means you add the possible Orbitals in the subshell Okay, so this is orbitals per subshell for example one um, N equals one will contain one orbital that is one s uh, So it has only one orbital per principal quantum number, that's per shell. If we talk about n equals 2, the second shell, it will contain 4 orbitals because 3 plus 1 equals 4. This is 1, this is 3. Alright, then we have um, the third um, shell and it is containing 1s, 3p and 5d orbitals. So if you add them, you will get 5 plus 3, 8, 8 plus 1, 9. So it contains 9 orbitals per principal quantum number. This is per principal quantum number, okay? Now the fourth shell will contain uh, one s orbital. This is fourth subshell, okay? Four s, four fourth shell. Then it has uh, three uh, p orbitals, labeled p, x, p, y, and p, z. D subshell contains five orbitals, and f subshell contains seven f orbitals. And if you add them, you'll get sixteen orbitals. Sixteen uh, orbitals per principal quantum number. And electrons per subshell. 
if you know that one s s can accommodate only two electrons s again as in the first shell so s shell s sub shell accommodate s orbital accommodate only two electrons if you talk about p orbital it will accommodate only six electrons because we know that three times two is total of six electrons as we discussed in the previous slide if you remember now this third this third principal quantum shell will contain um, one s orbital one p orbital and one d orbital one d subshell so, sorry subshell okay and if you add their uh, electrons they accommodate so s can accommodate only two electrons p can accommodate six electrons d can accommodate 10 electrons because five times two is total of 10 electrons likewise for four fourth subshell it contains four shell fourth subshell contains s p d and it also has an f orbital that will contain seven times total of 14 electrons okay so we have here the labeling of electrons per subshell so s subshell 2 p subshell 6 d subshell 10 and um, f subshell 14 now electrons per shell electrons per shell means you add the electrons in the in each subshell for example my one principal quantum number one n equals one that is uh, two electrons per subshell so it has only one that means there that the, it only contains one s so this means it will have total total of two electrons per shell okay then we have second uh, shell it will contain total of eight electrons because six plus two is eight Th third shell will contain two plus six plus ten that will be 18 electrons and fourth shell will contain two plus six plus ten plus fourteen that will be 32 electrons so make sure you are aware of this table make sure you just understand this table all right perfectly so you are aware of how many electrons each subshell each shell can accommodate how many orbitals each shell each subshell can accommodate this this you should not have an understanding of how everything works all right so i'm think i think we are done so hopefully we have covered most of the part of the subshells or orbitals so soon we are going to start with ionization energies so make sure you are tuned all right so we are done with everything um we're done with today's lecture make sure you are subscribed to the channel hit the like button comment down below and uh and what left so nothing is left now to just say that's it cheers <laughs>